Let me tell you about this really strange thing that happened to me once. It was up in the Yukon where there's tons of wild, untouched nature for miles and miles. I was flying my small plane, just doing a regular volunteer flight for the city of Whitehorse to check out the area. I had retired a few years earlier, and this kept me busy. It was a clear day, perfect for flying, and everything was going as smooth as you could hope for. Now I've been flying for years, and I've seen lots of animals from up above like deer, moose, bears, you name it. But this time, as I'm cruising over this dense forested area, something really strange catches my eye, and I'm talking about something I've never seen before. There, right at the edge of a clearing, was this huge, hairy creature. It was walking around on two legs, kind of like a bear, but not quite. You know how bears sometimes stand up, right? This wasn't like that. This thing was actually walking on two legs, and it was big, way bigger than any bear I've seen around these parts. I circled around a bit to get a better look, thinking maybe I was just seeing shadows, but no, this thing was definitely there, and definitely not something I could easily identify. It had this thick, dark fur all over, and the way it moved was just strange, kind of hunched over, but with more grace than you'd expect from something that size. And here's the interesting part. As I'm watching this thing, it suddenly stops and looks up. It felt like it looked me right in the eyes, but there's no way it could have actually seen me. Not from that distance and with me being up in the plane and all, but it felt like it did. That moment gave me a weird feeling. Now, I've heard stories about Bigfoot and all that, but I've always been the skeptical type. I mean, come on, a giant hairy humanoid roaming the wilds of North America? Sounds like something out of a bad movie. But seeing this creature in a place as remote as the Yukon, it made me start to wonder. I kept circling for a while, trying to make sense of what I was seeing. The creature, after that brief pause, started moving again, walking with long strides into the denser part of the forest. And just like that, it was gone. Disappeared into the trees as if it was never there. I stayed in the area for a while longer, circling, hoping it would come back out, but no luck. Eventually, I had to head back because of fuel, but the whole flight back. I couldn't stop thinking about it. When I landed, I didn't know what to do with the story. And also, I couldn't stop thinking about what I'd seen, and it was constantly on my mind. I did some research, and it turns out there were a few reports and stories from locals and hikers about a large, hairy creature lurking in the Yukon wilderness. Most people dismissed them as bear sightings or tall tales, but after what I saw, I wasn't so sure. A few days later on the weekend, I decided to go back. I know it sounds crazy, right? But I had to see if it was still there or if I could at least find some evidence of it. This time I took a snowmobile out and I figured it would be easier to track something down that way. I packed my gear, told a couple of friends where I was going just to be safe and headed out. It would take me over 24 hours to get to the area, but I had to do it, even if just for myself. I eventually made it to the exact area where I had seen the creature from the plane. It was even more remote and wild up close. Dense forest, thick underbrush, and the silence was eerie. I spent hours combing through the area, looking for any signs, footprints, broken branches, anything. And then I found something. It was a set of footprints, huge ones, embedded deep in the snow near a stream, too big for a bear, and the shape was all wrong for moose or deer. They were distinctly humanoid, but the size of them was just off the charts. I followed the tracks for a while, but they eventually led into a rocky area where I lost the trail. It was when I was stopped there near the rocks that I heard a noise, a deep, guttural sound, like a grunt or a growl, coming from deeper in the woods. It was close, maybe a few hundred yards away, and there was something different about it, something almost human. I hesitated, not sure if I should go towards the sound or head back, but curiosity got the better of me, and I slowly made my way towards the source of the noise. And then, just as I was approaching a thick cluster of trees, I saw it again. The creature, standing at the edge of a small clearing, partially obscured by the foliage. It was even more imposing up close. Tall, easily over seven feet, with broad shoulders and arms that hung down almost to its knees. The fur was matted and dirty, blending in with the dark greens and browns of the forest. 
It was doing something, rummaging around the base of a tree, but I couldn't tell what. I was about to move in closer when a pile of snow slid off a tree with a thud. The sound was loud in the silence of the forest, and the creature immediately stopped what it was doing and turned its head towards me. Our eyes locked for a brief moment, and in that moment, I felt a mix of awe and fear. There was a kind of understanding in its eyes that was almost human, and then with surprising speed, it turned and disappeared into the forest. After a few moments, I cautiously approached the spot where it had been. There was a small pile of berries and roots on the ground, like it had been foraging for food. I decided that I would set up a small camp in the area. The next day, nothing much happened. I found more tracks and some strange markings on the trees that looked like they could have been made by something large scratching at the bark, but that was it. Then, on the third day, just as the sun was setting, I heard that same guttural sound from before. It was closer this time, and there was something about the urgency in the sound that made me think the creature might be in distress. I followed the sound, moving as fast as I dared through the thickening darkness, and then, in a small clearing, I saw it. The creature was there, but it wasn't alone. There was a second one, smaller, maybe a juvenile, and it looked like it was hurt. The larger one was tending to it, making soft, soothing sounds. I stayed back, hidden in the shadows, watching. It was an incredible sight. These creatures, whatever they were, they cared for each other and they were more than just animals. I must have made some noise because suddenly the larger creature stood up, scanning the area. I held my breath, hoping it wouldn't see me. Our eyes met and for a second I thought it was going to charge, but then, as if deciding I wasn't a threat, it turned back to the smaller one. I didn't want to disturb them, so I backed away slowly and drove off. That was enough for me. I had verified their existence in my mind, which was the satisfaction I needed. I haven't gone back since. I'm good with what I know and I'm thinking that maybe some mysteries are meant to stay unsolved. I have this big thing for trail cameras and when I was 10, I asked for one for Christmas and was super thrilled when I got it. I've had loads of them since then, maybe about 12. I'm older now, 35 to be exact. I'm really into trail cameras, maybe a bit too much, and I'm that person who watches reviews of them on YouTube and keeps up with the newest models. Everyone has their own unique interests and mine happens to be trail cameras. I set up my trail camera on my grandpa's land, which is about an hour's drive from my place. He's got a big area, around a hundred acres. I've scattered my cameras all over the place, but I switch up their spots and download the footage every few weeks. Most folks use trail cameras for hunting, trying to spot big bucks in the area, but I'm different. I use them to capture cool animal pictures. I even have a spreadsheet where I record my sightings. And back in high school, I made a list of all the animals I could possibly catch on camera. Raccoons and opossums are pretty common, but I also spot a lot of deer. One time I thought I had a deer on camera. There's this massive eight-point buck that's been around for a while. I've got loads of pictures of it that I show off to my friends. The pictures started off from a distance. Since it was night, they're kind of fuzzy and greenish due to the night vision mode, but you could still see its shiny eyes and the shape of its antlers against the moon. At first I was pumped because of the impressive antlers. They were huge. I figured I hadn't seen this buck before and that excited me. That's what I'm after, seeing new animals. I ended up with about a dozen pictures of this thing. My camera clicks whenever it detects motion and it seemed like this creature was moving closer to my camera, almost like it knew it was there. As it got nearer, the image got clearer and that's when I realized it wasn't a deer at all. For one, it seemed to walk on two legs, occasionally using its front limbs for balance like a gorilla. Plus, it was way too tall for a deer. In one picture, it's standing tall like a person, with its antlers reaching about eight feet high. And it didn't look like a deer either. Even in the grainy photos, its face seemed skeletal. I wondered if it had some kind of disease. Its body was strange too, because it looked like it was wrapped in some sort of cage, really skinny. In one photo, its outline against the moon made its hip bones visible. Looking at these pictures made me increasingly uneasy, and even though I was in my own bedroom, I felt like I was being watched. I had to turn on the lights because I was spooked, like something was hiding in the shadows. 
I think what really got to me were its eyes. They were super bright in every photo, way brighter than a normal animal's eyes. It felt like they were staring right at me, even though it was just a picture. This feeling made me panic, and I felt like I was being haunted, like there was some evil spirit around me. It made me scared and nervous, like those eyes wanted to hurt me. That's why I did something rash and I deleted all the photos. Looking back, it was a dumb move. If I had known others had seen this thing too, I might have handled it differently, but in the moment I just needed that feeling to go away. It was like I was being chased by something sinister, like those eyes were following me, waiting to harm me. If I still had the pictures, I'd definitely show them to you. I know it sounds crazy, but it really happened. Since then, I've been avoiding going into the woods at night, especially at my grandpa's place. Every time I check my trail cameras now, I feel a pit in my stomach. I'm scared I might see that creature again. Part of me wants another picture, but part of me hopes I never encounter it again. I work nights as a nurse in a small town hospital up in northern Minnesota, and you know how spooky hospitals can be at night, especially the old ones with their long, dim hallways and that strange hospital smell that just hangs in the air. One night around 3 a.m., things were strangely quiet. Usually we get a mix of emergencies and routine checks on patients, but this time it was eerily silent. I was doing my rounds in one of the older wings, mostly used for storage now, but sometimes we have extra patients there. As I'm walking, I hear this odd noise, and it wasn't the usual hospital sounds, like beeping machines or distant footsteps. It was more like a rhythmic clicking, like someone tapping their nails on a hard surface. It was coming from a room down the hall, and I figured someone might need help, so I headed towards it. When I reached the room, the door was slightly open, which was unusual. Normally, we keep them closed, and when I pushed it open, the room was empty, but the sound was louder, coming from the bathroom. Instead of calling for help like I should have, I walked toward the bathroom. My heart was racing, and my gut told me something was wrong, and when I reached the bathroom door, it was slightly open, too. Inside, the sound was clearer. I flicked the light switch, but nothing happened. The light was out, leaving only a faint glow from the hallway. In the corner of the bathroom was this figure crouched down, facing away from me. It looked almost human, but not quite right. Its arms were too long, and its head was tilted at a weird angle. I stood there, trying to make sense of it all, when it turned around. The face was something out of a nightmare. Two big eyes, too dark, and its skin looked like it was decaying. It wore dirty, torn scrubs. Then it stood up, towering over me, with that horrifying smile. I was frozen in fear, unable to move, but then I heard someone else in the hall. The creature glanced toward the door, then back at me, and without a word, it slipped out of the small bathroom window with an uncanny flexibility, disappearing like an octopus through a tight space. A fellow nurse found me pale and shaken. I couldn't explain what I saw, just that something was in the room. She didn't buy my raccoon excuse, but she didn't press the issue either. I couldn't shake off the feeling for days, researching similar stories. Skinwalkers kept popping up, creatures that mimic humans but get things wrong, and they're believed to be a bad sign, something you never want to meet. Days later, there was an emergency in the same wing and I had to go, though I dreaded it. The whole time I felt like I was being watched, but nothing happened, until I heard that same clicking sound at the end of the hall. I couldn't ignore it, so I investigated. To my relief and embarrassment, it was just a broken ventilation cover making the noise, but the fear lingered, and I couldn't shake the feeling that something strange was happening in the hospital. A few nights later, a security guard came to me, spooked by odd sightings on the cameras. We watched the footage together and saw a distorted shape moving unnaturally through the halls, heading to the same wing, then it disappeared into a room just like the one I saw the creature in. Terrified but determined, we went to investigate. The room was empty and no sign of the creature. We returned to the security room, puzzled and uneasy. The hospital seemed to hold its secrets tight, and we were left wondering what lurked within its walls. Since then, things have returned to normal, mostly but there's still a lingering unease, especially in that old wing. 
Other staff have whispered about strange sightings and noises. It's as if the hospital itself is alive, in a really unsettling way. I've got a tale straight from my Aunt Carol, who's all about gardening and nature, and this story is real and not made up. It happened not too long ago, right here in the good old USA. Picture this, West Virginia at her cozy lake house. Aunt Carol loves her garden more than anything else, and she's out there every single day during summer, no matter if it's raining or the sun's shining bright. One evening, just a couple of weeks back, as the sun dipped low, she's out in her garden and it's getting dark, but she's determined to finish some weeding before calling it a day. She's got this little headlamp on, focused on her flower beds. You know how it is when you're really into something, everything else fades away. That's her with her flowers. So she's doing her thing, pulling out weeds, snipping off dead leaves and all the usual garden chores. She's got this peaceful rhythm going on, and it's super quiet except for the typical evening sounds, like crickets chirping. Then, out of nowhere, she hears this strange flapping noise. It's not like a bird, she says, but heavier, like a big canvas being shaken out. She stops and listens, thinking maybe it's just the wind, but it's a calm night. She stands up, trying to figure out where the sound is coming from. And there it is, perched on her old oak tree. This creature, she described it as huge, with wings almost like a bat's, but way bigger. And its eyes, she said they were red, like bright lights in the dark, just staring at her. She's standing there, holding her gardening tools, feeling tiny against this giant creature. She said it looked like a moth, but as big as a person with dark, grayish wings. And here's the thing, she says it didn't seem mean. It was just watching her, almost like it was curious. Aunt Carol isn't easily scared, but she said this creature was something else. She's torn between running or staying still. She's heard stories of the Mothman, that legend from around those parts, but she always thought it was just a story. Yet here it is, this creature straight out of a storybook, sitting in her garden, she takes a step back and the creature tilts its head, still watching her. No noise, no movement, just those bright red eyes fixed on her. She said she felt this strange sense of calm, like it wasn't there to hurt her, but come on. A giant moth creature in your garden? That's not exactly normal. Now she's out there alone and her phone's inside. She's thinking, who's going to believe this? She's not sure what to do and she's caught in this standoff with this moth thing. Then, just as she's about to back away, it moves. Not towards her, but it spreads its wings, and she said they were huge, like they could wrap around her car. She's frozen, not able to move, just staring in shock. Her mind is racing, and she's gripping her gardening shears like they're going to protect her or something. The creature is just perched there, its red eyes locked on her. It's spooky, she said, like something out of a movie. Then, in an instant, it spreads its wings. Aunt Carol said it was like watching a theater curtain being pulled back, but faster and scarier. The wings are massive, with this intricate pattern that almost looked mesmerizing under her headlamp. She doesn't know what to do, whether to run, scream, or stay put. Her instincts are all over the place. But she's stuck there, unable to move. The creature doesn't make a sound, just flaps its gigantic wings a few times, there's a rush of air, and leaves start swirling around like a mini tornado hit her garden. Then, just as she's gathering the courage to do something, the creature takes off. It's graceful in a strange, otherworldly way. The wings beat a few times, and it's flying higher and higher. Aunt Carol's just standing there, mouth open, watching it ascend. It's like everything else fades away, and it's just her and the Mothman under the evening sky. As it rises, the red eyes stay fixed on her for a moment longer. She feels like it's trying to say something, not with words, but with its gaze. Then it's gone, blending into the night sky, leaving behind a sense of wonder and a ton of questions. Aunt Carol, she's not one to believe in spooky stuff, but this encounter has shaken her up. She heads back inside, her hands trembling a bit. She locks the door but keeps peeking out the window, half expecting it to come back. After that night, Aunt Carol's not quite herself for a while. She's jumpy and always looking out the window when she's near the garden. But there's a part of her, this curious part, that keeps drawing her back outside and night after night, 
She's there, hoping to see it again. She wants to prove she wasn't just imagining things. She starts researching all these sightings, trying to see if what she saw matches others' experiences. She's got notes, drawings, all kinds of stuff spread out on her kitchen table. It's like she's turned into a little Mothman expert. A few weeks pass, and she's out in the garden again when suddenly there it is, perched in the same spot as before. This time she's more ready, less scared. She stands there, watching it, and it watches her back. Then out of nowhere it makes this sound, not quite a screech, more like a deep hum. It sounds almost… sad, if that makes sense. She feels this wave of emotion, like it's trying to tell her something. Then it spreads its wings and flies off into the night. That's the last time she's seen it. She keeps gardening, keeps watching the skies, but the creature hasn't returned yet. It's like it just came to say goodbye in its own strange way. Let me share this wild experience that happened to me. It all went down in a cozy little town, nestled in the heart of Montana, where I own a cabin. My cabin sits right on the edge of this thick forest, and now the locals always chatter about how strange things get near the forest, but I never bought into any of those tales. I was just there for some peace and quiet. On the first day, everything seemed normal. I was chilling in my snug cabin, nothing fancy, but it did the job. I decided to go for a hike and explore the area. The forest was vast, and it felt like I was the only one in the whole wide world out there. Trees towering above, the gentle babble of a nearby stream, birds chirping away. It was serene, to say the least. As the day started to fade into evening, I was about to head back when I heard this odd noise. It was like a soft whisper, but not quite. I thought it might have been the wind, but it didn't sit right with me. Brushing it off, I kept strolling. Then I spotted the creature by the creek, crouched down. Its skin had this strange, scaly texture like a lizard, but way bigger. And those eyes, bright yellow and piercing. When it caught sight of me, it was like a jolt ran through me. I froze, unable to move, just staring at this creature. It stared back and I could feel it sizing me up, like it was deciding what to do and I've never felt so terrified. It wasn't just its appearance, but the whole vibe felt off. It was like I stumbled upon something I shouldn't have. What baffled me most was, it didn't attack. It just kept staring, then sauntered off into the trees, as if it had more important things to tend to. Not like any animal I've ever encountered, but more purposeful, like it had a mission. It walked upright, slightly hunched, disappearing into the foliage. I need to get out of here, I thought, but my legs wouldn't budge. I was rooted to the spot, eyes fixed on where the creature vanished. My mind raced, struggling to comprehend what I'd witnessed, and it was like my brain refused to accept it. Then I heard that strange noise again, closer this time. It beckoned from the direction the creature had gone. Against my better judgment, I felt compelled to follow it like some invisible force was pulling me. So I began to tread cautiously, every step feeling like an eternity. The forest seemed to shift around me, darker and colder. I could still hear the stream, but it sounded distant, like I was in a dream. I trekked what felt like miles, and the forest growing stranger by the minute. I started seeing things, shadows flitting between trees and glimpses of scaly skin. I couldn't tell if they were real or tricks of my mind. Finally I spotted them again, the creatures gathered in a clearing. There were more of them now, communicating in that eerie, low sound. It wasn't loud, but it filled the air, resonating through the ground. I hid behind a tree, observing them. Tall with long limbs, they moved with a strange grace, and they didn't seem to notice me, or perhaps they didn't care. That's when it hit me. Whatever they were doing, it was significant, maybe even sacred. It felt like I stumbled upon their domain, witnessing something ancient, something beyond my understanding. I stood there for what felt like ages, until the creatures dispersed, melding back into the forest and as they faded away, the heavy atmosphere lifted. I waited until all was quiet, then bolted back to the cabin. I didn't look back, didn't stop to catch my breath, I just needed to get away. Back at the cabin I locked myself in, trying to convince myself it was all a trick of the mind, but deep down, I knew it was real. 
I had stumbled upon something that defied explanation, something that shook me to my core. That night I lay awake pondering those creatures. Who were they? Why were they there? And the most chilling question of all, what if they had noticed me?